Welcome back to Combat Mission Black Sea, where we're messing around in the dark. This is the Opportunity Nox scenario from the vanilla game, and it's interesting not just to demonstrate the differences in night fighting capability between the US and Russian forces, but because it's a small-scale conventional light infantry action in a game dominated by tanks, IFBs, artillery and air power. The scenario itself is very simple. In the swirling chaos of the fighting in front of Kiev, US forces are sending out night patrols to try and re-establish where the Russian lines are. Almost at the edge of its patrol area, our scout platoon has stumbled onto what looks like a Russian surface-to-air missile battery. The smart thing to do would be to take the battery out with artillery or close air support, but nothing is available, so it's up to us. The US scout platoon at our disposal here is pretty compact. We have a platoon HQ, a HQ support team, and two scout squads. All of these are four men strong, then a three-man scout team. Everyone is armed with M4A1 carbines, and there are a few M320 40mm grenade launchers spread about, plus three javelins. The key element here isn't the weaponry though, it's the optics. Not only do a third of the soldiers have thermal sights on their weapons, but they are all equipped with AN slash PSQ-20 enhanced night vision monoculars. These are combination night vision and thermal sights, so not only can the US troops in Black Sea see in the dark, they can also see heat signatures. There's also the powerful thermal imager on the Javelin launch units as well, so although our scout platoon is only 19 men strong, it has some serious spotting ability. That said, it is a clear starry night, and the Russians also have night vision equipment, so it's not an overpowering advantage. And of course, the instant anyone starts shooting, everybody is going to see them. Speaking of the enemy, we have a fair amount of pre-battle intel because our forward scout team has been eyeballing the position for a while. An AA battery usually consists of three vehicles, and we conveniently have three vehicle contacts around the barns in the far corner of the map. So that's obviously the area we're interested in, but there's also an infantry security element that looks to be deployed along this wall and at the bridge. There are nine spots in total, which broadly conforms to a Russian motor rifle platoon split down into teams. Then of course there's the fact that we may not have contacts for everything that's there, and that it looks like a main road runs across the map behind the barns, which the Russians could use to reinforce this position, or simply to transit through. In other words, our US scout platoon is probably outnumbered and outgunned, even before the possibility of enemy reinforcements comes into the mix. This isn't going to be an all-out assault, this is going to be a raid. I want to sneak into position, take out the AA vehicles with the javelins, and then leg it. So the question is, where can I get line of sight to hit the battery? The map is pretty small, which is okay because we've got to walk everywhere, and it's split in two by the river. On the left we've got an open wheat field with a great big pond in it, plus some woods, but the field rises in the centre and line of sight to the barns is obscured by the trees along the riverbank. There is a gap in these trees where the road crosses the river, but getting to a point where the javelins could be fired through that gap means getting disturbingly close to the enemy contacts guarding the bridge and actually crossing the road, and running the risk of having an errant Russian convoy roll through our platoon. So let's not go that way. The right flank is more promising. Here we've got a series of open cabbage fields and a little bit of elevation that allows us to see into the farm. The barns might obstruct line of sight to some of the AA contacts, but spreading out the platoon will probably allow them to get eyes on all three. The downside is that these cabbage fields don't offer a lot of concealment, and they're directly opposite what looks to be the main Russian defensive line, so getting into position runs the risk of getting spotted, and if the troops can somehow get there undetected, they're almost certainly going to end up in a firefight when they fire off the javelins. The third potential option is the riverbed itself. This has plenty of trees and thick undergrowth, and we know it's clear up to a point because that's where our advanced scout team is. Advancing any further, however, runs the risk of literally stumbling into Russian security teams, standing patrols, or even mines. It's a very obvious avenue of approach. So none of these broad options are massively encouraging, 
I can at least rule out going left though, and spreading the javelins between the cabbage field and the riverbed seems like it offers the best chance of pulling this off. In a perfect world, I'd want to javelin all three AA vehicles in one salvo, and then disappear into the night before the Russians work out what's going on. Of course, that's unlikely to happen, but it's something to aim for. The first thing to do is to give all the teams target arcs so they don't open fire whenever they feel like it, and to make sure that the forward scout team is set to hide. They start spotting Russians immediately. One of the pre-battle contacts resolves into an infantry squad. This highlights one of the key differences in night fighting capabilities between the US and the Russians. While my troops all have high-tech personal night vision monoculars, the Russian infantry here don't. Instead, they have night vision optics on their weapons. This is a big deal, not just because they're obviously not always looking down their scopes, but because these are older generation optics to boot. It's not pitch black out here though, and they still need to be treated with respect, but it's worth noting that the scouts can see them, but they don't appear to be able to see the scouts. I've got 4th section moving down the riverbed towards the scout team, then 3rd section heading into the centre, and 2nd section pushing out towards the far right. This way I can hopefully open up enough line of sight angles around the barns to spot all three target vehicles. The platoon HQ is hanging back between 3rd and 2nd sections as a local reserve, just in case. The infantry starts off by walking forwards, but after rechecking the ground and realising that they're masked behind a reverse slope here, they get the order to speed up a bit. By turn 5, things are progressing nicely. The platoon HQ even manages to briefly spot the first AA vehicle. Thankfully, it isn't a Tunguska, which gives me nightmares. It's an SA-13. This is basically an MTLB with a quad SAM launcher on top. It doesn't have any self-defense weapons, and the lack of engine noise indicates that it's not going anywhere, which is obviously quite helpful. Less helpful is a momentary spot out in the cabbage field up ahead. It looks like a Russian patrol is approaching on the mid-right. The good news is that we spotted it in advance. The bad news is that the closer they get, the more likely they are to spot members of the scout platoon. Three minutes later, and it's clear that there's going to be a collision. The javelins aren't in position to spot any of the targets yet, they've had to slow down and stop in case they attract any attention from the patrol, but even if they were, launching a missile would light them up like a neon shoot me sign at this range. The Russians are moving forward quite carefully, they've started using bounding overwatch and have almost reached the edge of 3rd section's 50 meter target arc. I don't want to have an engagement where an enemy squad is half in and half out of anyone's arc. The soldiers will probably not engage the enemies outside the arc, so it's time to cancel them and put that patrol down. This is a lot less risky than it sounds. Some of my annoyance at not getting good spots on the AA battery so far is due to the prone scout sections not being able to see over the slight slope at this end of the cabbage fields but the same slope is going to shield them from view from the rest of the Russian security force. On the next turn, the patrol moves forward again, right into a crossfire. The 3rd section's javelin team engages them from the left, while the platoon HQ engages from the front. At the same time, 2nd section's javelin on the right spots an AA vehicle and immediately fires a missile. This plunges in dead centre and takes it out. The Russian patrol can't have failed to see the missile fly past, but they've got bigger problems. Three go down in the first minute, then two more in the next. It would have been interesting to try and take a prisoner, but if the last man ever intended to, he never put his hands up in time. This was a little too long to be a perfect ambush, but the Russian patrol presumably never got a good enough spot to return fire. The tracers in-game are just a visual representation of the bullets. The Americans here aren't actually firing tracers, so all the Russians probably saw was disorienting, strobing muzzle flashes amongst the cabbages. And because the scouts were all prone behind the crest of the slope, the Russians' buddies back at the farm were unable to help out. That's nice and all, but the cat is definitely out of the bag. I've failed to do what I wanted to do, conduct a simultaneous fire ambush on the AA battery, and I've ended up doing the thing I wanted to avoid, having a firefight. But of course, if I just wanted to blow stuff up without a challenge, I'd head off to the gunnery range. I need to figure out what to do next, though. 
the element of surprise is gone, should I take what I've got and disengage, or try and bag the other two SA-13s? It's a decision I'm going to have to postpone. As the patrol in the cabbage fields is being liquidated, the forward scout team spots another Russian patrol moving forwards along the riverbank. There's no question whatsoever that this one is going to run straight into the scout team, and they're already so close, it feels like it would be too risky to move. So over by the river, my hands are somewhat tied. To give the scout team the best chance of disengaging, I want to ambush this patrol too, which means hanging around. I could start to disengage with the sections in the cabbage field, but it seems pretty safe over there now, so it's got to be worth angling for more javelin sight lines. The river patrol stumbles into the scout team's target arc and gets hit hard. Like their fallen comrades over in the cabbage field, it looks like they never make the spot, and they're picked off with bursts of 5.56 and 40mm grenades without ever returning fire. That leaves the way open to disengage safely, but there's just one thing to do before the platoon slinks back into the night. The javelin teams from 4th section by the river and 3rd section, which has joined the platoon HQ, almost have line of sight on the two remaining SA-13s. The problem is they're behind the crest, and the TAC AI isn't keen on standing up or kneeling in the cabbage fields or the undergrowth down by the river. This makes sense from a self-preservation point of view. The TAC AI is trying to hide and stay alive in otherwise pretty open dangerous terrain, but it's annoying as hell when you're trying to get it to engage over a slope like this. One solution is to give them a quick movement order. I've been getting around using move and slow because I'm taking my time and I want to be sneaky, but using quick, the tech AI takes a little longer to go to ground when it reaches a waypoint. So both javelin teams rush forward a little, spot the two remaining targets, and engage. The battery is out of action, and it's well past time we were going. The sections in the cabbage field can disengage simply enough, all they have to do is run back behind the crest and leg it down towards the river, but 4th section's javelin team got spotted when it launched its missile and quickly comes under fire. Crawling away towards the concealment of the riverside undergrowth isn't quite cutting it, especially when they're suddenly enfiladed by the Russians down by the bridge as well, so I order them to run. Only barely being missed by an RPG that streaks past, they disappear into the night. The entire engagement, from opening fire on the cabbage field patrol to that final RPG, took about 8 minutes. Another 10 is enough to pull back to the exit zone on the map edge and withdraw before hitting ceasefire. The result is a total victory for the Americans. All three SA-13s were destroyed without taking any casualties, which is something of a rarity for Black Sea. Inspecting the map reveals a BTR-82A with a 30mm cannon sitting in the cabbage field. There was no sign of this before, so it must have come to help the security detail out, making it a good job I didn't get bogged down and pinned in place by a protracted firefight and got out while I could. Overall, the Russians suffered 11 dead and 8 wounded, 12 casualties between the two patrols and the remainder made up of SA-13 crew, the big deciding factor was undoubtedly the American technological advantage. All the advanced night vision equipment and thermal imaging allowed the scouts to see without being seen and, for the most part, engage without being engaged. The Americans are scary enough in Black Sea, but they're even scarier fighting at night. That said, I was playing this scenario against the AI, and the AI not only has a scripted playbook with a limited capacity to react, but it needs solid spots to engage. A human opponent is much more competent and easily capable of working out what's going on, where the enemy is, and then subjecting them to a torrent of area fire. I hope you enjoyed this video though and found it interesting. The smaller scenarios are always a nice change of pace. I'll catch you in the next one.